black Native Americans built the mounds in America. Leo Viner, in Africa and Discovery of America, proved that many of the mound builders of the United States and Mexico were Mandingo speakers. He saw the mounds as defensive structures built on the African type of stockade model. Leo Viner wrote, I have already pointed out that the mounds of the mound builders were town sites with the hill for the Kachik or chiefs, residence and temple, just as in the Sudan, and that the North American stockade is identical with the stockade in West Africa. We find many similarities between the art styles of the inhabitants of the mounds found in the area that encompassed ancient Mali and the mounds built in the United States and South America. In 1310, Mansa King Abu Bakari of the Mali Empire set sail for his kingdom to visit the lands across the Atlantic. In this expeditionary force, there were probably around 25,000 men and women. Yes, 25,000 men and women. Over time, the Malians were nativized, so we can count them among the first Native Americans. People in West Africa during King Abu Bakari's time were not ignorant of the nautical sciences and navigation. West Africans had a highly developed knowledge of boat technology and navigation sciences. The canoes they built from gigantic trees were as big as the boats sailed to America by Columbus. West Africans had a highly developed knowledge of nautical sciences, boat technology, and navigation. By Europeans when they came to the Americas were those mounds built by the black Native Americans. This was the Arawak Indians and people in Florida. Hernando de Soto, the only European to see occupied mounds, tell us much about their construction and use. De Soto and his men discussed the mounds they found among the Florida Indians, the Yamasi. Here, as mentioned earlier, lived many black Native Americans. De Soto noted that at Usita, Florida, I quote, the town was of seven or eight houses built of timber and covered with palm leaves. The chief's house stood near the beach upon a very high mound made by hand for defense at the other end of the town was a temple. It is interesting to note that in Florida, one of the major ethnic groups living there was the Yamasi or Jamasi, a tribe of black Native Americans. It was the Yamasi who De Soto saw build mounds. The mounds in the United States are usually found near rivers. In the Ohio Valley, 10,000 mounds have been discovered. In the North Mound Zone, they border on the shores of Lake Erie into what is now Michigan, Wisconsin, and on into the states of Iowa and Nebraska. In the southern United States, the mounds line the Gulf of Mexico from Florida to eastern Texas and extend up through the Carolinas and across the state of Oklahoma. The mounds of ancient America follow the lines of the Mississippi and Ohio River and now lying regions as well. They may have been built on rivers because of the fact that when Abu Bakari sailed to the Americas, he came on ships, and these ships would have came inland into the American continent along the various rivers that would have led into the Americas from the Atlantic Ocean, mainly the Mississippi. The mounds that the uh, blacks built vary in size from colossal mounds to Illinois to mere blisters raising from the earth. Most, if not all, of these mounds had long been abandoned by their former inhabitants when they were discovered by the Americans. Many excavated mounds have yielded human bones, weapons, tools, inscriptions, and jewelry. They've also found statues in these mounds that were described as African. Statues of Africans have also been found in these mounds. These, uh, these statues were basically, in a sense, copies of statues that we found in mounds in Africa. We can, we can describe the Apricot statues of type 1 
of a humanoid in a sitting position with the hands on the high on the thigh and right knee pointing up while the other knee is resting on the ground. These type of uh, statuettes are found in mounds in Tennessee and Indiana at the Angel site. The most common type style two statues are statues of humanoids in a sitting position with the hands placed across the chest. These statuettes have also been found at Etowah and Temple Mound sites in Tennessee and Georgia. It is also interesting that anthropomorphic statues found in Polk County, Georgia are analogous to statues found in Mauritania. Black Africans are characterized as being broad-faced, full-lipped, illustrating pronasticism, large bone with fleshy noses. Samuel Morton in Crania Americana, written in 1839, noted that the Adena people, the Adena Mound people that is, possess ponderous bony structures, large jaws and broad faces. This description of the Adena fits exactly the description of the West African type. Most of the Malian influence has been found among artifacts from the southern death cult. The arms of these statues are placed across the chest. The pipes recovered from many mounds in the United States and the name tobacco itself suggests that it was the Mandine who introduced tobacco to the New World. The Mandine may have also constructed the temple mounds. These mounds were built between A.D. 700 and 1700. The temple mounds were built in the central Mississippi Valley, Arkansas, southern Missouri, southern Illinois, and western Tennessee. The sculptural evidence found in the mounds all indicate an African origin, as proven by Leo Viner. A long pipe with a crouching figure on the bowl on exhibit in the New York Historical Society is of an African with compound bracelets, five on the wrist, six on the upper arm, four on the calf, such as only found in Mexico and West Africa. These bra bracelets are found in gorgets from the Etowah Mound, which show Malian influence. Other sculptured heads and figurines of Africans have been found on the banks of Paint Creek, the Chillicothe, Ohio, Tennessee, Mississippi, and on the Green Flats in Virginia, which were African headdresses, skull caps, and facial striations, identical with those of the Mandi people of West Africa. We also find the depiction of Africans in carvings from Spiro Mound, Oklahoma. At Spiro Mound, African faces were carved on shelves and the Mandine cross sign placed on the palms of the hands on one artifact. This cross in the Mandine script meant righteousness or purity. Other inscribed works of art from Moundville site in central Alabama also show, show Mandine signs, especially the Mandine cross. A figurine found in a cemetery in Nashville, Tennessee was of an African woman, while another African statue was found at Clarksville, Tennessee in 1897. These statues, as well as heads on the gorgets from the Missouri mounds, show analogous striations found on the faces of Mandian clansmen. Among the seven Delft cult mound builders, we find a third type of statue, which has the leg and knee at the base, with the arms placed across the chest with the heads resting above the breast. Another type statue is seen in the effigy jar with weeping eye motif. It has as its base the feet and buttocks. The knees are pointing up in the air and the arms are placed across the chest with the hands placed above the opposite breast. The major reason for the varied art styles among the mounds that were built by the Malians when they came to the United States results from the fact that Mali was composed of many different ethnic groups that spoke different languages and practiced varied cultures. As a result of this ethnic pluralism, we find a homogenous people inhabiting many mounds in the United States that practice a multiplicity of cultural forms. In addition to the transfer of African-type statues in the mounds, the Malians also left many inscriptions. These inscriptions and statues support the African origin of many mounds in the United States. They tell us that these mounds were built by black Native Americans.